You know, another favorite on our show was our staff meteorologist and weatherman. He probably wouldn't like being called a meteorologist, May Flowers. Now, we have a clip here of his final weather forecast for us. And it seems, or he's at least said to several tabloid journals that he sold his story to, you know, this tabloid papers like the Omaha World Herald, uh, he said that there was a message in here uh, for us as to what lay ahead. I personally don't see it. Why don't you take a look at it with me and judge for yourself. Thanks, gents. I wanted to tell you today that this will be my last time of giving you the forecast. You see, I got a job offer to go to, to a station that's actually going to pay me some money. So I'd like to give you, give you one last forecast and maybe kind of give you a forecast for your life. So let's, let's take a look and see what the future's going to bring. Tastes like stormy weather. You know, even a show that was produced as far away as England couldn't escape the jinx that was involved with the show. It seemed that anybody that had anything to do with the show had trouble. And according to the legend that's grown up surrounding Dr. Ha, huh, apparently there was a, a foreshadowing of the future for us in this show. I don't see it. Why don't you help me? Let's take a look at the clip. Japanese toddies. What's the matter, too... Doctor? Oh, the console just seems to have a mind of its own, Phoebe. Oh, well, at least it has a body. True, Phoebe, true, but we're getting closer every day. Have, every day. Have, have, have you found that planet we were looking for yet, Doctor? Yes, Phoebe, if you'll look over here on the monitor. It is quite a desolate hole, Phoebe. I still don't understand it. We're closing in on it now. Will we be there soon, Doctor? Yes, Phoebe, yes, yes, yes. Oh, wonderful. Hopefully the Master won't beat us there. Oh, uh, something tells me we've seen the last of him. Oh, uh, I don't know if I would be so sure about that, Phoebe. I am not sure at all. Oh, I'm sure, Doctor. Well, let's see what sort of mischief we can get ourselves into, Phoebe. Are we landing, Doctor? Yes, I believe we'll be landing just about... Now. Oh, wonderful, Doctor. Come, Phoebe. Let's go. Struggle. Ah! Superior in 
intrude out. Intrude out. You. So, <coughs> so, doctor, you thank you for retrieving my body for me. I could have done without you. What happened to your voice, Phoebe? Why, nothing happened to my voice. I've been playing you like a violin since way back in Omaha. Phoebe, I am, I'm shocked. Shocked. I'm shocked. And, and what about the master? The master, the master's been my pawn all this time. No, no, he can't be. He can't be. You, you've been playing me? Like the a... Tylo? For a fool? Ah, ah, ah. Just like a violin that's been out of tune for years. This, this is gonna work. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of your attitude. I'm really sick of your pressure. Screw this. Is that, is that a take? Was that on film? I don't know. Uh, well, what do you say, um, you know, we uh, do lunch. Go get something to eat, huh? Thank you for joining me this evening for a evening of reminiscence, time of looking back. I ask that you join me next week as we take a personal pointed and sometimes very poignant look into the slide of into public lunacy of a television star. I hope that you'll all join us again next week as we take a look at the events that led up to the eventual demise of my brother. Please join us next week. <laughs>